The impact of COVID-19 has surely brought awareness around the importance of one's quality of life. Today we discuss immigration towards smaller towns and how it has proven to be a better choice lifestyle-wise. This is Private Property Podcast. I'm Dumi. Let's unpack. Today we are joined by a doctor. He holds a BSc from the Stellenbosch University as well as a MBC HB from the University of Cape Town with an honors degree in sports medicine. He's the chief executive of Pam Golding Properties and he's internationally acclaimed for promoting South Africa as an investment destination. Ladies and gentlemen, here's a conversation I had with Andrew Golding and this is how it went. Hi, Jimmy. Pleasure to be with you. It's always a pleasure and having having a man of your stature on our podcast is truly a feat for us and we are talking semigration, something that's so popular in the property market now, you know, something a lot of people are doing. So let's jump into it and say, if somebody doesn't know what uh, semigration is, let's go into detail and let's tell them what, what it's about. So, so it really is a, a derivation of immigration, um, except that it's not to leave uh, the country, it's just to relocate from uh, one part of the country to another. Uh, it's actually been around for a long time. Um, I think that the term was first coined about 20 years ago when there was uh, the first wave of uh, potential purchases leaving the northern parts of the country and moving down to the south. And um, the, the trend has really continued but has obviously accelerated uh, with COVID and has been a, a central feature of a number of the characteristics of the property market that have changed uh, as a result of COVID and the so-called new normal. Yeah, and and talking about the new more normal and COVID, um, what kind of effect has has immigration had on it? Is it has it been a positive one? Are they are we seeing some disadvantages because of COVID, or or things that are happening in the market now that could be um, attributed to immigration that could either be positive or negative? So I, I think uh, with the with the, the, the lockdown and the post lockdown environment, there were a number of systemic changes that, that potentially happened in the market. So in other words, permanent changes. And um, one of those was definitely a move uh, from the inland provinces to the coastal areas. And that was pretty much the entire coast. So the west coast of the country and the east coast. Uh, and it coincided with, uh, I think, all of the characteristics of the new normal around working from home, remote working, uh, people making lifestyle choices as opposed to having to live and work uh, close to, to where their offices were. And so a number of those changes have taken place and they've had significant effects on all of the coastal areas uh, of the country. Um, certainly positive effects in terms of those markets. Uh, the inland provinces um, have perhaps taken um, a bit of a disadvantage in that there has been a significant move from the inland provinces to the coast, but certainly the coastal towns and cities have definitely benefited. Sure. And, you know, you spoke about people moving from the north mostly to the south and, you know, moving into the coastal areas. Can you just take us through some of the hotspots that you guys have been seeing in the industry in terms of um, where people are moving to and maybe some of the reasons why you think this is the case? Yeah, it's, it's very difficult to sort of pick out any specific hotspots because the entire coast of the country has, has benefited from uh, KwaZulu-Natal all the way down through the Eastern Cape Garden Route and obviously the Western Cape. The Western Cape was certainly uh, the sort of prime spot of the original semigration, but really the whole um, coastal part of the country has benefited. And the reasons have been um, very varied. So uh, people who've decided that they're able to uh, live in a coastal area and still work from there. So that's either remote working or in fact uh, commuting from a, a coastal area which has an airport close to it has been another reason. Uh, people have moved for lifestyle reasons. That's certainly been a very um, significant factor. Education's played a big role. So families are looking to educate their children at the coast and now can, can now work from there. And then access to medical facilities has also been an important reason why people have chosen uh, either a city or a town which happens to have um, adequate uh, medical facilities. So the, the, the reasons have been varied and obviously against the backdrop of affordability being a key driver um, of what people feel they could afford uh, has also been a factor in terms of determining where they were looking to move to. Sure. Um, and in your expert opinion, I mean, this um, this trend is gaining 
uh, steam and people a lot of people are now doing it and they're doing it for various reasons as you mentioned what what in your opinion would you say um is is likely to happen in the next coming years are we are we likely to see maybe people moving back to the city because you know COVID is now phasing out slowly and i'm, I'm saying this you know with a little pinch of salt in terms of um uh, things are slowly going back to pre-COVID era. So what do you think is going to happen in the next two, three years? What should we expect to see in the industry? Yeah, so I think it's an interesting question and um, one that I, I don't think we can give a definitive answer to because um, while I think many people felt that their move to the coast was going to be permanent um, and be able to work from there, I think there's an increasing sense that uh, people might be having to return to work wherever that was. And so we'll have to see, I think we're going to probably see a hybrid where some people are going to be able to continue to operate from their so-called Zoom towns, which have, have certainly benefited significantly, the small holiday towns um, along the east coast of the country in particular have been enormous beneficiaries of this emigration trend. And uh, our sense is that many of those homeowners would like to continue uh, to live and effectively work from those small towns because of the lifestyle benefits that those towns afford them. But I think a lot depends on what happens in the so-called hybrid workspace, uh, whether employers are going to demand that employees return uh, to work if, in the northern parts of the country, if that's where they came from. Um, and so I think the jury's out uh, as to exactly uh, whether that trend is going to reverse. Um, certainly in terms of, I think, what people would like to continue with, they'd certainly like to continue to live along the coast and enjoy those um, lifestyle and other benefits. Sure. Thank you so much for that. And if you just joined us, we are talking semigration. So send, um, remember to engage with us on the comment section so that if, if there's any stories that you have around semigration or even comments about tonight's topic, do engage with us. Remember, 500 Rand is up for grabs, so make sure that you engage with us. You know, as an expert in your field, Dr. Andrew, th this, um, these trends that come and go in the industry, you know, um, how can one prepare for such? And th this goes for all uh, categories of players in, in the industry in terms of how can rental agents, um, uh, people who are landlords, people who are property investors, tenants, you know, every single person who is in the, the, the space, how can they prepare for such trends to make sure that if you have a, an investment, it keeps on being lucrative. If you're an estate agent, you keep on leasing, you keep on making sure that you are you're selling those houses what what advice do you have for 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 um, the property players right now yeah so i think one's just got to keep one's ear to the ground one's got to read um, the information that's available uh, in terms of the the property media um, and try and get a sense of whether a trend is is transient uh, or is going to be there for a while and uh, i think there's been a lot of information that's been um, distributed around um, the systemic changes that have taken place, not only in our market, but I think markets across the world, um, and where, where the, the view is that those trends are um, certainly medium term and, and potentially also long term. Um, and that gives a good indication uh, around whether um, that trend is to be taken seriously or in fact it's likely to be uh, transient, as I said. Sure. And before I let you go, I would just like to quickly ask you this question. If you were to emigrate anywhere in South Africa, apart from where you are currently, where would you go? Uh, well, I think, uh, first of all, I'd do my homework. Um, <laughs> so I think it's very important to, to make sure that you have as complete an understanding of a, a market, what's happening in that market, um, what the costs associated with moving are, uh, what are the, uh, the, the features that one must be aware of that, that are driving you? So if it's education, you know, do your homework around the education environment. Uh, if it's lifestyle, make sure that you understand that. Um, and, and really just take your time around um, the purchasing decision because it's obviously a big one, probably the biggest one in most people's lives. And um, one needs to have as, as full a set of knowledge as possible before one uh, jumps into a certain direction. Sure. No, definitely. And, um, you know, one of the biggest uh, stumbling blocks in, 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 in property spaces, affordability. A lot of people sometimes bite off more than they can chew and they, they don't really afford. So research and making sure that they know what they're getting themselves into is one of the most important things. Any last words about immigration before I let you go? So I think there's, a, there's an opportunity to do a lot of desktop research uh, before, before sort of looking at a particular area. And then I think it's just really important to consult as many credible people as possible to get as full a picture as possible 
uh, of the particular area um, that you're looking to potentially invest into. Um, and then just recognize that, that property is a very hyper-local um, environment and that uh, values can differ from street to street, values can differ even within a street, and therefore it's really, really important to um, get as much detailed information as you can and have as informed an opinion as possible before uh, taking the plunge. Thank you so much. And I think after tonight's episode and tonight's conversation, people will definitely have an informed opinion. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you taking our time and your busy schedule to join us tonight. Have a great night. Great pleasure. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you. A very insightful conversation there we had with Mr. Andrew Golding um, talking semigration. So if you are considering semigrating but aren't really sure, let's take a look at Brian's story and maybe this will give you that little inspiration um, to semigrate. Brian is 36 years old and formerly worked as a financial advisor for one of South Africa's big banks. Prior to the big move away from Pretoria East, he had been somewhat in a dull routine. He'd go to work, head home, play with the kids a little bit before falling asleep. Brian used to go to the office every day before COVID. He liked it since it allowed him to get away from the rigors of the home life. Brian's company had to close for, for two weeks due to COVID. And as a result, his regular routine was disrupted. I've always been a routine person, he says, but because of COVID-19, that had to change. Brian despised the couple of weeks, uh, the first couple of weeks in lockdown, since he had to work remotely. He would usually complete his tasks before 2 p.m. This helped because he then started spending more time with the kids, going to the gym more often, and even taking up cooking. He was still frustrated, however, and he felt that there was something missing. While watching the news one day, a reporter re claimed that individuals were relocating uh, after COVID in order to change their lifestyles. Brian recognized this as a change that he could need. He told, this, he told his wife, and luckily she agreed. They packed their stuff and headed for Cape Town. Brian now resides in the Western Cape and works from home. Him and his family are more happier now. They enjoy their new place because of the beautiful sunset and the sunrise views. The house is considerably larger than the one they had, which means the kids have their own playroom upstairs where he can finally have a little bit of peace and quiet to do some work. The moral of the story tonight really is that you can be like Brian and allow that change to come into your life. And if you want to move, do so. The most important thing about it is to know what you are letting yourself into. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for showing us love on Facebook and interacting with us and sharing the post. And I'm sure that you had a very good time tonight learning about semigration. It is time right now to announce the winner of that 500 Rand cash prize. And it goes to none other than... Okay, wait, I'm waiting for that drum roll. All right, the name is there, Hope Mutiani. Thank you so much, Hope, for sharing and engaging with us. We will see everyone else tomorrow right here, 7 p.m. Have a great night.